Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Rohan Khandelwal. I'm a breast cancer surgeon and a national level faculty for surgery. And I've been teaching surgery to students for the last 12 years now and guiding them for their entrance exams. Today I'll be talking about surgery as a branch. Recently the results have come out and some of you have done extremely well and I congratulate you on your result. My inbox is flooded with messages asking about surgery as a branch and the opportunities after that. So I just want to take this opportunity to address some of those questions. So the first question, of course, is why take up surgery? It's a hectic branch, involves a lot of work hours, and you don't have an independent practice till very late in your life. Well, everyone has different likes and dislikes. Some people are just born to be surgeons. And that feeling comes from within. And you know, when you want to do surgery, you don't think about anything else. So the first category of students are the students which I've just mentioned, who are born surgeons, who always wanted to do surgery. I guess there is no confusion for them. The confusion is for those students who like surgery, but they also like some other branch. So for all of you, I just want to put some facts across to you. Number one, surgery is an evergreen branch. And it's not going to be replaced by any machine or any robot in the future. So that's number one. Second, yes, it is a branch where you need to be mentored by somebody. You need to work under somebody for a few years, learn the skills, learn the art, and then go out and practice it on your own. As compared to medical branches, where in medical branches you can establish a practice relatively early, in surgery it takes a few years more. Yes, the number of work hours also which you put in are going to be slightly more during your training as compared to a medical branch. But does that pay dividends in the future? Is it rewarding in the future? Well, if you talk about finances, because that is the one thing which everyone has been messaging me about, financially it's a very rewarding branch. You might start earning a bit late, but once you start earning, you can cross your medical counterparts or match them pretty easily. So in terms of financial earnings, there is no disparity. I would say more than that, there is a sense of satisfaction where if you've removed a tumor, if you've drained an abscess, if you've resected a particular problem, there is instant gratification, right? The patient gets well, the patient gets discharged, and instantly you see results. Whereas in medicine, sometimes the disease can be quite prolonged and chronic, and to see results, you have to wait for quite some time. So as compared, compared to that, Surgery gives you instant gratification if the, surgeon, if the patient goes home well, hale and hearty. So I hope I've addressed your question regarding surgery as a branch. Now the second thing which students have been messaging me about is MS versus DNB, right? Which one to choose? How does it affect their career opportunities? Well, to be very honest with you, the difference between MS and DNB is fast reducing. A few years back, yes, a gap was there, discrimination was there, but it's fast reducing. Also, what you have to realize that after MS or DNB, if you want to do an MCH, you again have to sit in an entrance exam. And as long as the entrance exam does not have an interview, there is no discrimination. You can't discriminate while solving MCQs. Okay. At the same time, I would like to mention that I know few colleagues who have done their MCH from premier institutions like AIMS and PGI, despite being DNB candidates. So it also depends on your resolve 
to do well and to achieve a certain thing. If you ask me to rate MS and DNB, I would rate MS slightly ahead of DNB, but as I told you, the difference is fast reducing. If you are getting an MS from a good institution where there are ample surgical opportunities, cutting opportunities, that should be your best bet. If not, then you should opt for DNB from an institute where there are ample surgical opportunities and there is a good lineage of DNB students passing out from that institute. So I hope that helps you in deciding between MS and DNB if you're somewhere in the between and your rank does not give you a clear picture. The third question which students have asked me is regarding MCH versus fellowships versus just plain MS. What are the opportunities in the future? Well, I practice in Delhi and Gurgaon which are both metropolitan cities, tier one cities. And what I can tell you is that a simple MS is also doing well. An MS with fellowships is also doing well. And somebody who's done their MCH is also doing well. So again, I would like to say that your degrees or the qualification of the skills which you learn, they help you in entering a particular domain or starting your career. But once you've started your career, there are a lot of other things which play a role in making sure whether you will do well in your career or whether you'll do, you'll be an average surgeon. Okay? So don't bother too much about these thoughts, whether if I don't do an MCH, I won't do well in life. That is not true. Okay? You need to have a clear goal in mind. If you want to specialize in a particular branch, you need to know, is MCH the best option for that branch? Or is a fellowship a best option for that branch? Okay? And then take a call. If you just want to be a plain MS, that's also great. There is a role for a general surgeon as well. My advice would just be to hone your skills in laparoscopy, which is the bread and butter of a general surgeon these days. Okay. The next question which I want to answer are, is regarding the six year DNB courses. Now, you know that there are six year super specialization courses in neurosurgery, in pediatric surgery, in CTVS surgery, and plastic surgery. Now, my thoughts regarding these six year courses, the advantages of this six year course is that you will come out as a trained super specialist. So you don't need to sit for an exam again. Most of the times, these people, these students are absorbed in the same system, so you get a job easily. And then you can start your career from there. But the disadvantages are that once you take up the six-year course, you're stuck with it. You can't change midway. So if you don't like neurosurgery after a year or two, you're stuck. Also, I've seen that the exposure to general surgery is less as compared to if you do general surgery and then specialize and do your MCH. Also, for six years, that department considers you a child only because you entered there as a first year. Till the sixth year, you're a, you're a first year only for them. You're a bonded laborer. Okay? So, only take up these six-year courses. To conclude, only take up these six-year courses if you're very, very keen on that particular super specialization. And make sure you choose the institution carefully. You should find out from that institute, from the seniors there, whether they get to operate or not by the third year. 
Are they doing independent surgery by year four, five, and six? What are the job placements like? What is the passing rate like from that institution? So ask all these questions from that particular institution, from the people of that institution. The next question which I want to talk about is surgery for ladies, for girls. And I see so many messages from girls who've got excellent ranks and they want to take up surgery, but now they are being forced by their parents to take, up, take some other easy branch. Well, no branch is easy. And I will say the same for surgery as well. The training is rigorous, you have to work hard, but the rewards are also there. Are the rewards same for males and females? Yes, they are. I know so many examples of excellent female surgeons who are doing so well in their career. They're heading, they're the head of certain societies or they're the head of institutions at many places. So again, it all depends on the amount of hard work which you're willing to put in and what you want to make out of your own career. I shared an image recently on Facebook where a trauma surgeon said that being a surgeon has made her a better mother and a better family person. So surgery is a way of life and not a profession for, for a surgeon, for people like us. So I would again say that if you're interested in surgery, give it some thought. It is a good branch for females. Some of the top plastic surgeons, oncosurgeons these days, pediatric surgeons are females. So you can do surgery and you can do well in it as well. There is no discrimination even during training. In fact, I joke a lot of time with female students who message me regarding this. I tell them that when I was doing my post-graduation, I always thought that the lady postgraduates used to be favored by the senior residents and consultants. They used to get more hands-on opportunities than us. So I don't see any discrimination happening. The next thing is some of, stu some of the students have been messaging me that they suffer from tremors. So should they take up surgery or not? Well, I know s most of you have gone through such a stressful period preparing for your entrance exams. And in this stressful period, your body is full of caffeine, full of catecholamines, and that can sometimes cause tremors, right? And you think that those tremors will continue in the future as well. Well, if your tremors are due to anxiety and nervousness caused by the entrance exams, I would strongly recommend that you spend a few days in a hospital, try to take some sutures, try to assist a surgeon. If you're not getting tremors, you can take up surgery comfortably. But if tremors is a serious issue, if you're taking medications for it, or if the tremors are quite severe, then I would avoid surgical branches. Now, when it comes to color blindness, I always tell students that think about the patient, right? And think about your handicap at the same time. If you think your handicap is mild enough where it will not hamper the life of a patient, where you can differentiate between gross colors, then you can go ahead and take up surgery. But if you think your handicap will affect a patient's life, then it's best to avoid surgery as a branch. Now finally, before I conclude, what are the things which you need to keep in mind while choosing an institute for surgery? So of course, choose an institute which will give you ample surgical opportunities. That, will, that should be the priority for a surgeon. Number two, the academics. How are the academics of that institute? But at the same time, I would like to tell you that in surgery, most of the time you'll be learning from your immediate seniors and from the books. 
Nobody is going to spoon feed you. Okay. Number three, you should take into account the lineage or the history of that institution. Where are the postgraduates from those institutions settled currently? Have they done their MCH? Have they got selected in premier institutions? Are they running successful practices? So that helps because that means the guidance which you're getting from the mentors of those institutions is correct. And it is going to help you shape your career in a positive manner. Fourth can be geographical considerations. Is there a bond there? Is there a language barrier there? So these are things which you should take into account as well while choosing a surgical institution. At the end, I would just like to say that surgery is still an evergreen branch. And as I jokingly say, that if you see the list of Padma awardees, most of the times you're going to see surgeons and cardiologists. So surgeons still have a great career in front of them. So don't be hesitant in taking up this branch. If you like this video, do press the like button. If you, have, if you still have any queries which I have not addressed in this, videos, in this video, please write in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. All the best.